Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and today we're going to talk about a brand new company. This one is called Opalberry and I have been in communication with the owner and his wife, they're both owners, I should say co-owners, and we have been going over some adjustments to their inventory. A few months ago, they sent me their first batch and wanted me to test them. And I didn't do reviews on those because we wanted to make sure that we kind of perfected what they had to offer before they announced it to the public. So now they are live on Amazon. They've got their shop up and ready and they're selling the next couple of items I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna review the two pieces that I have separately because they are totally different. So I've started with this one right here. Now you can see the box is beautiful packaging. And the importance of that is that you know it's going to come not folded, not damaged, you know, in any way, shape or form. So this one is going to be this design and I'm gonna put that here. Now, the beauty of this piece, and when I first opened my original kit they sent me, I was like, are you kidding me right now? So every time I think that pick my numbers can't go above and beyond, they surprise me. These companies are working so hard to do something innovative, and I am so impressed by that. And I love the fact that this is a husband-wife team and you guys, especially right now during this pandemic, you know how everybody's been affected financially. And I just think it is a wonderful thing that they're able to launch a new business that will help all of us during the pandemic, you know, to relax and kind of get our Zen therapy. So I'm just really impressed with the husband and wife team and also with what they're trying to achieve here. So let's open this box up and let's talk about what we have inside. So what you're seeing is accurate. This is wood. They are planks of wood put together and the numbers are printed on the top. How amazing is that? So one thing I noticed when I did the first test run is that on wood, the paints can be very transparent. So they've been working really hard to get that improved, but we're gonna try today to seal this or to prime this wood so that our paints will stick to it better. Because this is such an amazing piece that I don't want it to not work for us. And I want to be able to paint this. I'm going to use gesso on that, and then we're gonna test our paints on that surface once it dries. But first, before we do that, I want to show you the contents. Now this is shrink wrapped and you can probably see lights bouncing off of it. But on the back, when we flip this over, you'll see that we have our vacuum sealed paints. And this is a tool that I'm going to open and show you because I think this is ingenious. Like I, I wish every company sent this and I'm gonna show you what that is in a minute. We also have our reference guide that's printed here and our paint brushes. So these are wooden paint brushes. They're a little bit better than the plastic ones we have received in past kits. So I'm happy about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this up and I wanna show you this little tool. So this is just a little extra, but I wanna show you what this does. It is basically like a bookmark. Cause it's got this little ribbon on the side but the beauty of it is, it has a magnifier. You guys, for those of you who are struggling, let me get my, my uh, reference guide here. For those of you who are struggling to see these tiny little numbers and sections, look. Now I'm shaking because I've had too much caffeine this morning. We're not gonna discuss that. But you can see how cool is that. We can magnify these sections with this little thin, ruler that will lay on our desk. It can be left out. It is not awkward. It is thin. It's flexible. I mean, it is amazing. I'm y'all. I am. So, I am such a nerd because I'm so excited about this one piece. I don't know what to think about it. 
So anyway, you can see how it magnifies. And it's also going to be good for, you know, having as a little ruler just for whatever you need it for. But how cute is this? Invaluable tool is included. So now I'm going to go ahead and use clear gesso to prime this wood. I am really hoping that it doesn't affect the print on the other side. And that is why I have two of these. One is going to be for a test. The other one is going to be for me to paint or to give as a gift. And so we're going to test one of these and see how that helps the transparency and opacity of the paints. Because you can, I'm just going to show you the paints. We're going to swatch them later. But if you'll notice, there are a lot of yellows. Yellows, you guys, are just the worst because of the fact that they do not have a lot of pigment. By nature, I know I've said this a million times in videos, so I apologize for the redundancy and my repetitiveness, but these are always going to be tricky colors. So um, this palette does have a lot of those and it's sunset and everything. So, you know, I'm prepared for some transparency, but I believe that once we put down some clear gesso on this wooden surface, that it's going to get a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the clear gesso. And while it's drying, I will do a review on painting number two that I received from Opalberry. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this on camera. I'm taking my wide brush. You guys, it doesn't matter really which, br which brush you use. I use a wide one because it covers more surface area. And I kind of lay it down like this when I pull. And that way I don't have as much you know, streaking or lines in it when it's dry. Right now, my biggest concern is that it doesn't smear any of this ink that's on here for the numbers and lines. All right, this is clear gesso. So those of you who are not familiar, it will dry clear. So we can still see our numbers and lines. all of that gesso that I had in the bowl. It looked like a lot, but it really did cover um, nicely. And I'll tell you, so I'm basically, I'm just kind of pulling this brush through to get rid of any really deep, noticeable stroke marks. So I just barely, like, barely hold on to my handle. And I'm just kind of pulling and any strokes, it kind of just eliminates that. Now we want texture. So a lot of people have been asking, do we sand in between? Certain projects, you might would do that, but you never want to sand in between if you're putting this on a canvas or on something like this, because the whole purpose is to eliminate that smooth, slick texture and your paints move around too much. So if you're not sure about gesso, clear gesso, I have videos just on clear gesso, but do not sand because if we sand, we're back to a smooth surface that's not going to accept and hold the paints like we want it to. So I'm gonna go clean my brush. We're gonna allow this to dry. I feel like this is gonna dry fairly quickly because of the fact that it's gonna soak down in there. So I will be back very soon with the next part of this particular painting. All right, so as I promised, I have gessoed this board. Now it did take away that really smooth wood that was so nice and gave it texture. Okay, so it is a very rough surface, but the only way this is gonna be able to be painted, I, I feel like, without the paint seeping in and causing you to do multiple coats, is to put on at least one, if not two layers of gesso. So I've only done one layer, and I'm gonna test a section and see if I think that one layer is enough. We're gonna see how this paint will sit on the board now that we have some gesso on it. I do recommend that you try to use your painting within three to six months. Um, I have so many that that's not possible. So I'm gonna start giving mine away to charitable 
organizations or to my kids who want to paint, you know, or grandkids or whatever, um, so that I can not just hoard them and all the paints dry out and I've wasted money. So that's my plan anyway. All right, so let us look at these paints. I have not swatched these paints yet, but I do want you to notice there are 30 colors. So this is a beautiful range of colors that we're gonna be working with. I'm just gonna pick a section. Now four is a very light color. It's almost a white. Of course, that's the one I had my eye on. Uh, I don't really wanna start there. I wanna start with a color. And there's the other white. <laughs> What are the odds of me picking the two whites out of this whole thing? So let me slide it down a little bit. Let's find another one. So I'm going to find a color, you know, that I like, and then we're going to test it. And I'm going to try their brushes because the brushes are wooden. They're not the plastic ones. And, um, and they do look a little better. They're nothing expensive or fancy, but I do want to try them out. So I rinsed off any conditioning that might have been on there so they're soft. This one's the smallest one. And we're going to try this when we paint. So let's go ahead and try number four. It is a light color, but I mean, we are testing to see if one layer of gesso is enough. So why not, right? I'm just using the flat brush that came with the kit and I have not added any flow aid or anything to this paint yet. All right, I'm already gonna tell you, this is covering way better than the first time I tested the kits. Um, I'm not gonna do this entire section, but I really feel like you need to clear gesso your board to get the paints to adhere better. So let's try one more color. I'm gonna find, see if I can find this number five. It's kind of a lime green. You know, lime green can be a little tricky thing. But let's see, up in here, just to see, because lime is a, is a very difficult color, I wanna see if it's gonna cover, especially on wood. Now I'm not being super neat, I apologize you guys. And I didn't trim this little brush or anything. Let me use, okay, let me use, I'm gonna use this Golden Maple number one brush. And, cause I haven't given my new little wooden ones a haircut. covered very well very well yay all right let's try a yellow 17 you know how yellows suck but if it will cover this it is amazing okay y'all definitely gesso your wooden canvas I, I don't know why I'm calling it canvas wooden surface if you want the paints to work better. Now, I definitely will be adding Flow Aid. The paints are a good texture, but um, Flow Aid's gonna help it move a little better on this surface. So I'm gonna actually get my Flow Aid and we're gonna add a little bit to one of these paints and see if it helps move little smoother just because you know I mean a surface that's got wood is going to be a different texture than what we're used to which is what I love about it but yeah that's covering very well all right let me grab my flow aid so I'm going to just use the little pipette dropper and let's pick a different color let's add two three I got about two drops of flow aid in that. Now I've got my metal stirring stick, which we'll, I'll be putting in the bottom. Let's go ahead and take this out of here and mix it up. And I stir from the bottom up to get the flow aid mixed in. 
This is also gonna stretch our paint a little bit and because of the fact that wood is so porous that we're not losing paint down into the texture of the wood. Um, so it's gonna help us with that as well. So I'm adding two more drops. Stirring it from the bottom, mixing it all the way up and around. I'm not trying to get it thin. I'm just trying to get it creamy. Now I'm going to slide off the excess into the pot. If there's any left on this little stick because I, there we go. Stick it down in my little handy dandy water container. And so we're gonna do this little section here. See if it moves a little easier with the flow aid. Oh yes, oh my goodness. Fabulous. Goodness, oh my gosh. Yes, you guys, that's the trick. Beautiful, perfect opacity. I love it. While I'm here, let's go ahead and do that number nine too. Now I am gonna move downward with my paintbrush because if you go back and forth, you will destroy your, your bristles. Gesso, clear gesso can be rough on your bristles, but if you're moving in one direction, it's not quite as bad. All right, you guys, super impressed, very happy. Clear gesso is the key. I only did one layer. If I get around here and I find that I might need a little more, I could go back and add another layer on top if I haven't done too much work. Um, but for now, I really believe, I mean, it feels like sandpaper, but it really does look like it's gonna cover beautifully. So what I would do when I finish this piece, normally I do not seal my paintings, but I think I would seal this painting and I would apply a satin or a glossy finish, probably a satin finish, because that would give us back more of a, a little smoother, slicker texture, and nobody has to know that it felt like sandpaper while we were painting. All right, you guys, thanks as always for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm definitely trying to reach a goal by December 1st. I have about two and a half weeks left to try to reach 10,000 subscribers. So I'm not sure if it is just me being an overachiever or delusional, but I would love to have you subscribe to my channel because you want to see future videos on Paint by Numbers. Um, and you guys, appreciate you being here. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you back soon.